Let me start by saying this. I thought USC Upstate was not odd. I thought their kids came in. Dave Dickerson's bunch came in and, uh, and, and made some jumpers. Made some jumpers in the first half and found some confidence. And, you know, our defensive effort to start the game, I do not think, and again, this is without watching the film, I do not think it was poor. I think once they hit a few of those, our guys responded the wrong way. It was almost as if they're supposed to miss those shots. And this is supposed to be an easier game. And sometimes, you know, you, you fall prey to human nature. I think our guys, again, they were ready to play. Uh, I thought for the most part, outside of maybe one or two of the, the threes they hit in the first half, pretty contested. Guys were communicating. And they hit some tough shots. And then we let that affect our mentality uh, until about the 12-minute mark to, uh, to end the game. And it shows the power of the three-point shot in college basketball, really at any level. Uh, but the power of the three-point shot, uh, it can keep you in any game. Fortunately, we were able to uh, find it within ourselves to clamp down, play much stronger, do a better job on the perimeter in the last 12 minutes or so to really gain the separation that we did. But I give all the credit in the world to Coach Dickerson for being able to come off um, really some uh, some butt whippings and be able to come in here and have his kids, his young kids, his freshmen and, freshmen and sophomores ready to play. As I told our team, um, you know, these games that, uh, that are on the schedule uh, sometimes are hard to play. They just are. You know, we didn't schedule them. I didn't schedule them. Our coaching staff didn't schedule them. Uh, but they were on the schedule. But those games are over, uh, starting with Akron on Sunday. This was the first time that you guys have trailed in the second half this season. What was your message to your team at that point? Um, I had a lot of messages, Danielle. I think that the message that I think is the most important message is the one that I told them uh, at the end of the game. And that is, the team's going to go through some rough periods of play. They're going to go up against an opponent that isn't in awe, that plays as well as they can for 10 minutes in a stretch. And we're going to be put in some tough moments. To be honest with you, tonight uh, wasn't as tough a moment as we're going to find in the next month or two. But it's good for a team to figure, it's, figure it out. Were you planning to play Malik and David tonight, or did you do that out of necessity? No, I was planning on playing them. Did you like what they brought to the court? Absolutely. I wouldn't put them on the floor if uh, I didn't think they could bring something to the court. What went into the thought process to play Dave when you did tonight? I don't know. He's a good player. He's worked really hard to get himself back on the floor. I mean, coaches play good players. What's Dwayne's impact on the class? Incredible. Seven. Incredible. They Dwayne got recruited by a school uh, like USC Upstate. I asked him in the locker room in front of his teammates, how many Division I offers did you have coming out of high school? He said three. And uh, it just shows what heart, will, competitive character, uh, and, and a kick-ass attitude can do for a kid. 15 off or 15 rebounds. 15. He's not six foot nine. He's six foot five. He doesn't look much different than a lot of the kids that were guarding him tonight. He's a warrior. Warrior. We need more of those on our team. Yeah, the only thing I could say is how come his teammates can't uh, figure it out? I mean, some coaches that are a lot smarter than me have talked about how playing hard is a skill. And it must be. It must be because nobody else um, around the country can figure it out like Dwayne. I mean, Dwayne just he hasn't figured it out. He airballs the three. His expression doesn't change. You know, he's not pouting. I mean, he's a warrior. Our point guards did a great job not letting the, uh, the eeriness of the game affect their decision making. They got in the lane, sprayed the ball out, go 14 assists and one turnover. Uh, you know, with our, with our two point guards, I don't know what David did, zero assists, zero turnovers. So he went 14 assists, one turnover, three point guards. 
Chris, what did you see from David and Malik when they were in the game? Same thing that you saw. I mean, Malik's going to play his tail off. Um, he's going to be a little rusty, but he, he affects he affects the game. Um, he's got a voice out there, and that's why he was voted a captain. You know, he can do things that Steve can't do defensively. Um, and then that uh, the lob that David got, that's no different play that we've that we've run. I mean, Fresh had the same you know, back screen layup in the first half. You saw where David caught it, right? A little different spot than Fresh. His was about a foot over the rim, and Fresh was like two feet under the rim. Chris, we've talked a lot about you have about David on the floor, but from the from July until now, what you've seen of his work ethic to get back in a period of time that's a little shorter than what maybe was expected. Um. I'll be honest. I haven't I haven't seen his work ethic a whole lot because when you get injured, your work ethic is with the trainer um, behind closed doors. Nobody really cares uh, about watching you do rehab. It's monotonous. Uh, I know that I had three ACLs and a knee replacement. I should say that I actually have seen David a lot because I've been in the training room with him. But none of his teammates see you know what he puts in. And there's some lonely days when you get injured like that. Um, but you know he's a competitive kid. He's got very very high character. He was injured before earlier uh, in his later grade school freshman year. And so he's used to bouncing back from injury. He was, you know, well coached. He went to a great program. He's a high character kid and a great player. Uh, offensively, your shooting numbers are back in the second half. Is that just a reflection of better execution or not let, not getting down about what happened in the first? Uh, I, th I think it was also a matter of, um, you know, us getting stops. I think it put us out in transition a lot more. You know, Ryan got free. Um, we ended up, you know, Jordan getting a layup or two. Uh, we just got some easier runouts uh, to up our shooting percentage. But it was more defense to offense, uh, at least from what I can recall. It seemed when Steven made that block of what would look like a certain layup, that that was kind of the thing that really spurred the team and led to a run out. Well, I think we need those those plays all throughout the game, uh, but I do think that play got our fans into it. Uh, you know, I think fans fall prey to human nature. You know, it's just they look at the the schedule and they're like, uh, well, you know, it's an easy win. And you know, it's again the power of the three point shot. And so, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of energy in the building to start. We didn't give the crowd a whole lot to, to cheer about. That type of play really got him going. I thought our crowd was awesome in the last 10 minutes, but well, we were a lot better. So it's usually chicken to the egg, and it should start with us. And uh, that type of play, uh, a great weak side awareness out of Steven blocking the shot, uh, I think was a, uh, a conduit for us playing with a lot of energy in the last 10, 12 minutes. I know you said that in the beginning, you know, that they were making jumpers. It wasn't necessarily anything that you guys were doing wrong on defense. But so in the second half, when they weren't making as many shots, was that just bad luck on their part, or was there something that you guys were doing? That kind of I thought our defense, our, our defensive intensity, w was better. It was better. Uh, I thought, you know, you could see it with our ball pressure at times in the first half. It wasn't near what it would, you know, would be. And I think, you know, there was a time where Jordan. I was really crawling up into a kid in the second half. I didn't see that in the first half out of many guys. And so I, I don't want to, I don't want to misrepresent that, that we were UVA in the first half. We were far from it. But uh, you know, several of those made shots were at the end of the shot clock. Several of those drives were at the end, and our team has to stiffen as the clock gets less. And I didn't think that we did that. And then when they made a couple of those shots. Um, you know, it took the wind out of our sails, and that's not a good thing. You know, teams that win championships, teams that put themselves in conversation to be one of the best teams in the country, will not allow the wind to go out of their sails on a few major shots.